The last section of this tape is the Composite Studio tutorial. It is not an in-depth tutorial, but just one that will get you started and be able to handle some basics for preparing your stills. Let's take a look at Composite Studio. I know this program looks confusing to many people, so I'm going to try to explain parts of it. Other areas I will just leave alone because I don't get into them myself. I use Composite Studio mainly to work with vertical images, vertical pictures. Instead of putting them on a black background, what I like to do is to put them on a nice looking background with either a frame or a bevel and a drop shadow. Sometimes I might want to put more than one picture on the screen at a time. So let's, let's look at all the elements that are here at Composite Studio. Well, first of all, on the left-hand side, these buttons. Quit is self-explanatory. You press that and you'll get a yes or no. Do you want to really end the program? Help brings up a nice little help screen. And if you have a question about anything, you just simply click it on. And on the right-hand side, is an explanation of what it is that you're you're asking about. So even without an instruction manual, you can do quite a bit here. All right, let's go back. The about, of course, tells you the version of Composite Studio. And the options are described in the manual. Again, this is something I don't tend to get into uh, too heavily. When you've put together a project, if you want to see if you have enough memory to handle it, that's what the check button will do. And it just, <laughs> in very simple terms, will tell you how much memory you have left and you're looking for words like great or okay. This back button used to work and it will work if you have toaster paint prior to the flyer 4.2 or even 4.1. If you have the older version of toaster paint or you load an older version, this will work. And what it does, it allows you to bring an image in and then make it a background and then work with other images on top of it. But I'll show you how to get around that when you're working with the current toaster program. The CN button over here will center your image. This button, well, let me show you. Just pretend we have an image right here. We really don't. But if that were an image, we push center, CN, and you'll notice it moves right to the center. Now, if you want to find out where your television cutoff is, you press this little gizmo right here, and you see an approximate safe area. Now, to get rid of that, just press it again and there it goes. The size, you know what, why don't we check that with the help area because even I'm not sure. Let's see if we can find that. <laughs> okay, click on this button to change an image or brush to its proper size and we'll get into that a little later. Here's a very important button, Save Element, and it's the one that, when not pressed, causes the most confusion. This is why many times you'll think you're going to be coming out with a particular picture and it doesn't look the way you thought it was going to. It's probably because you forgot to press Save Element. Save Element. Now, here, this will clear the screen of everything. This will place an image that you have. Let's see if we can do this. Let's say you've got 
an image that <clears throat> is in front of another image. But now you press the second image and suddenly it moves in front of the first one. But you'd like to get the first image back to where it was originally and instead of going through several buttons you just simply push this and the first image moves forward. And the reset button will take an image that's in the screen and just take it away. Okay. Now let's cover, let's bring up an image so at least we know what we're working with. Well, I'll, I'll cover the next few buttons. Uh, this bevels, this will give it kind of a mosaic look. Doing this to an image right here will turn it into a negative. This will emboss it, kind of give it a, a three-dimensional or actually it looks like it's it's going back into the image. I can show you that. Here's your drop shadow and the number refers to how many times the shadow will paint itself on the screen. In other words, a one is a very minimal drop shadow and a five is a very heavy drop shadow. And by clicking on the the area directly underneath this little image will tell you where the drop shadow will appear. You see, the more I click it, the heavier, it, the longer it becomes. If I want to move it over, if I want to move it over to the other side, I simply bring my pointer over here and I can move that drop shadow anywhere I want around the image. Up, down, to the top, to the side, to the bottom. Okay. This button will blur it and you have three different levels of blur. This turns it the image into a black and white picture and on the video scrapbooks I can show you where that can come in very handy. Of course you can do that quite quickly in toaster paint. So it, it's just a matter of you know what you want to do but there might be times you want to use that here. And this puts a frame around the picture and you come up here and then you select the different frames, any one of the frames you want to use. Okay, let's, okay, well, we can continue. Let me clear this a second. <clears throat> this button will bring in an image. Think of an image as a frame store or an IFF file. However, if you click on the little uh, button to the right of it, you'll notice that the word image changes and now it reads brushes. So if you want to load a brush, you have to click on this button and it, it cycles through either image or brushes. The last button indicates whether an image is going to be clipped or not. Again, look at the help file and we'll press that button and you can see right here uh, there's an image uh, plus a, a box and if we don't press the, the clipped button, the image stays inside the box. If we press the clip button, the image is actually kind of clipped off, so the box tends to clip it. Again, the instruction manual goes into more detail. Of course, that just will get you to your workbench or wherever else you're going to be. This number right here tells you how many elements you're working with. In other words, we have bird, three lights, and a background that's considered three. Let's clear the image. Let's add the first image.
And the minute we save it, you see we have we have one image here. We bring up another image and we save that and now we're working with two images and we bring up another image and we now have three images. Over here are a series of templates Now you do have to watch this. I found this out when I first got the program. Always make sure you're in the load position when you touch one of these because if you press the if you're in the save position and you press one of these buttons, anything you have up here will actually get saved on top of the template because you can create your own. But you have a whole bunch here and you go through them by just simply pressing this outside button or the outside arrow, I should say and you have all these possibilities. See, these are already pre-made for you. And this represents an image that you, you know, you can bring in there, a photograph. Here we would have three different photographs and they're all laid out with drop shadow, beveling. It's all done for you. This whole series right in here, the colorize and the transparency, again, they just follow the same pattern that you can do in toaster paint. You can add color, you can colorize a picture, you can make it transparent. You have all these different settings. You can, uh, it just allows you to do them a lot easier than trying to use that little circle that's in toaster paint and try to figure out uh, what color goes where on the circle. Here you can easily see where you're going to apply it. The same thing here, we have textures and patterns. I'm not going into these four areas only because I, I tend not to use them, and I'll be honest with you, I don't know them that well. I've, I used, I, when I first got the program, I played with them to find out what they would do. They're probably be, and they are very helpful. In fact, if you want to go beyond what I'm going to show you here, you'll want to use texture, textures and patterns and colorize and transparency. But I've just found that what I'm doing, I don't have that much of a need for it as far as working with the video scrapbooks. I'm trying to work as fast as I can, and... I'm not looking to design a lot of the filtering that you can get with this.